So any one line segment has exactly one midpoint, and we present to you the formula for the midpoint. Now notice that there's a common between because it is a midpoint. You see the word point in the word midpoint. So in order to find the midpoint, we need to have two given points. We are doing some algebra. We have two given points that represent the endpoints of a line segment. And there's an important placement where things go, similar to the distance formula, where it's important where certain parts of the points go into the formula. So you notice that our formula doesn't actually have an equal sign, like the distance formula. Let's go ahead and try out a problem. So here's our two points. R is at 1, negative 3. And point S is at 4, negative 1. And those are the endpoints of this line segment. So theoretically, the midpoint, or the, the bisector, if you will, should be somewhere around this area. So again, let me model for you a couple of important things here. Notice there's a common between. I'm using the formula as has been given. I replace all the variables with parentheses because I'm going to go ahead and substitute the correct things in each position. If it helps, in general, when we talk about Cartesian points, we're talking about an X value and a Y value. The X value comes first and the Y value comes second. So this is a midpoint, which is actually a Cartesian point, And there's a comma in between. So that means this represents the X's and this represents the Y's. So if I plug in the X values, I have X1, which is one, and I have X2, which is four. The y values go in the y coordinate, negative 3 and negative 1. If we simplify this, we get 5 over 2, and we get negative 4 over 2. But we should simplify if possible. So 5 over 2, we'll leave that as a fraction. And negative 4 over 2 is negative 2. Now, for those of you that are not sure what fi how to graph 5 over 2, you could if you want. On the test, I'm going to most likely have this remain as a fraction. But if you need to express it as a decimal, you could. 5 over 2, you put in the calculator, you're going to get 2.5. I would suggest you try that out. And then you get negative 2. Interestingly enough, if we look at our graph, that's probably pretty close to what we thought it would be. So 2.5, 2.5, half is right here. And then we go down to negative 2. And that's right. So this is 2.5, negative 2. That is the coordinate of the midpoint for this given line segment. So for part B, this one's interesting. This time they gave us a midpoint. So you're always free to draw these things, right? J is given as 1, 4. They gave us a midpoint, which is M, 2, comma 1. We want to find out what the value of k is. So we want to look for the other endpoint. So if we go ahead and set up the formula, we do have one point. We have the endpoint 1, 4. So that's one of the x values. And that's one of the y values. As far as we know, k the coordinate, we know it's going to have an X part and a Y part. So let's go ahead and just make an X part and a Y part. And up to this point, you should be pretty comfortable because that's exactly how we did the last problem. However, we don't have numbers to add and divide and simplify. We have a variable that we need to solve for. Question is, how do we solve for it, Mr. Over? Well, this is a special problem that we're about to do only works if they gave us a midpoint and we're looking for the endpoint. So I'm going to actually make this equal to the midpoint, right? So we actually have the answer this time. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and separate this. So we know this is the X value of the midpoint. And we know that in order to get this answer of a 2, we have to use this part of the midpoint formula. So what I'm proposing to you is that these two are equal to each other. In a similar fashion, this is the y coordinate. And if we do the math magically, somehow this ends up being this answer right here, as we showed in the previous problem. 
So I'm going to set those equal to each other. And what we're going to do at this point is we're going to solve. We're going to do algebra. So let's start with this green one. In order to get rid of this 2, we multiply by 2. And to get the x by itself, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. And I get that x equals 3. We do the same thing over here on the blue one. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. And again, the reason for that is so that these two can cancel out. I got to do that to the same side as well. I get 4 plus y equals 2. And we subtract 4 from both sides. And then we get y is equal to negative 2. So, to put this all together, we're proposing the following. That if one of the endpoints is at 1, 4, in order to have a midpoint of 2, 1, this endpoint has to be 3, negative 2. How do we get that? Well, here's a 3, the x value, and here's a y, negative 2. And if you wanted to even check for yourself, you could. For example, if you take this point and this point, and you do the midpoint formula as we did in part A, you're going to get this as an answer. You're brilliant. You're handsome. You're rich. For your summary, why is there a comma in the midpoint formula? Explain.